Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is a question I'm going to answer from one of the Solomon papers on S1 statistics. A question on normal distribution, and it's question uh, number three from Solomon I of S1. Um, this is Solomon collection of papers. It's also question number 12 from my end of topic worksheet number seven, which is on normal distribution for S1. Um, and part A is tells you that the, first of all there's a call center that is dealing with complaints collected data on how long customers had to wait before an operator was free to take their call the lower quartile of the data was 12.7 minutes and the interquartile range was 5.8 minutes okay so they're asking us to find the value of the upper quartile of this data so we know the lower quartile which is called q1 was 12.7 the interquartile range was 5.8 and we had to find q3 which is the upper quartile well it's pretty simple because the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile is the interquartile range if i did q3 minus q1 i'm going to get the interquartile range so we're going to find q3 so q3 minus 12.7 is equal to the interquartile range which is 5.8 so therefore q3 is going to be 5.8 plus 12.8 7 so q3 is therefore going to be that's going to be 17 plus 1.5 that's 18.5 um, minutes that's q3 okay so there's the answer to question part a and now for part b okay now part b says it is suggested that a normal distribution could be used to model the waiting time so we've got to calculate correct to three significant figures the mean and the variance of this normal distribution based on the values of the quartiles. Okay, so we have to uh, think about um, how to standardize these scores and use the normal distribution bell curve in order to work out um, what the uh, waiting time is going to be. So we have to think about, we know that the, we know the, um, interquartile range okay so basically what we can say is uh, we need to find the mean and the variance of this model distribution okay so what we can do here is we know that basically the normal distribution curve which looks something like this let me just draw it properly I'll have this type of shape here bell type of shape okay this is the normal distribution curve Try and do it as best as I can. It's not that perfect, but anyway, we know <clears throat> that the lower quartile is going to be uh, somewhere where 25% of the data is less than it. So this is Q1. 25% of the data is less than it because that area there is 0 0.25. And Q3, which is the upper quartile, 25% of the data is above it. Okay, so we know our value of Q1 is 12.7 and we know our value of Q3 is 18.5. So what we've got to do is we've got to standardize these scores according to the areas to the left and to the right of these points. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go to the uh, tables for normal distribution. Okay, so now uh, the tables for normal distribution, I have a copy here. And basically, what we have here is something um, where the top table here is a table that we'll need because on the top table here, this this value of p here is the area to the to the right of this z value. Okay, so the z value are the standardized values, and the p uh, co the p columns here are the areas to the right of those z values. Now we're looking for Oops, we're looking for something over here. Let me just make it a bit thinner. Okay, something over here. We're looking for this Z value, and we're looking for this Z value. Okay, and the Z values that we're looking for are such that 25% or 0 0.25 of the area is to the left of this Z value. Let's call this Z1 and Z2. And for this one, it's 25% of the Z of the areas to the right of the z value so the table here tells us the 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 z value such that this is the z value such that that is the area to the right of it 
So we're looking for the area of 0 0.25, which is actually not found in this. 0 0.25 is not found here. Okay, so now that, that means I can't use this table. So you always check for the areas if you can use this table here. If you can use this table here, then use this table. If you can't, we can, see, I don't have an area. I don't have the area of 0 0.25. I have 0 0.2, 0 0.3. This is 0 0.025. That's not good enough. We need 0 0.25. So because we couldn't find the area in this particular table, I have to go to the table below, and I'll have to look at the second row. This is the area such that, in this case, this is such that uh, the, the, this is the area to the left of the Z value. So, um, and the Z values only start from the positive, start from zero. Okay, so I need to find the value such that the area to the left of this is 0 0.75. So I'm looking for a Z, Z value of 0 0.75, which, which would mean the area all the way from Z2 all the way back. The, I, for, once I find this value, then I can find this value because they're symmetrical, and this will be the negative of that. So I need to go look, look for uh, a area of 0 0.75 in the table. So if I look at the phi Z, which is the area, I'm looking for 0 0.75, or the closest I can find to 0 0.75. Okay, so here I've got 0 0.7486 and 0 0.7517. Okay, this is closer to um, 0 0.75 than this, because this is 14 away from 0 0.75, and this is 17 away from 0 0.75. Uh, so I can use this value here, 0 0.6. So I know that the value I'm looking for over here, 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0.67. So this one must be negative 0. 0.67. Okay, so that's what I can see from this table. Um, 0. 0.67 is what I'm looking for. Okay, so on this side is a positive and this side is a negative. So I know my standardized value for the upper quartile is 0. 0.67 and for the lower quartile it's negative 0. 0.67. So if we go back to our table here or to our question here, this is 0 0.67 standardized and this is negative 0 0.67 standardized that's the z value and this is the x value and we need to find the mu value okay so now we have to find we know that the standardized score which is z is equal to the x value minus the mean over the standard deviation which has got the symbol sigma we need to find these two and we can use first of all the lower quartile i can say 0 0.67 is equal to x, which is the score, which I know is 12.7, minus the mean over the standard deviation. I don't know either of these two, but I've, I can make an equation now, 0 0.67 times mu, uh, sigma, sorry. My sigma looks like a 6. Okay, I'm not very good at drawing sigma. Um, is equal to 12.7 minus mu. So that's one equation that I found from Q1. And then I can find a second equation from, from Q2, from Q3, sorry, not Q2, from the upper quartile, and that is that 0 0.67 is equal to um, 18.5 minus the mean mu over sigma. So now I can make an equation from this that um, 0. Point, sorry, this is negative 0 0.67 Q1. What am I doing? That's negative 0 0.67. This is positive 0 0.67 times sigma is equal to 18.5 minus the mean mu. Okay, so this is negative because it was on the negative side. Let me just make that a bit neater. I, I wrote 0 0.67. It's supposed to be negative 0 0.7. Negative 0 0.67. That's the Q1 value. Okay, so now I have these pair, this pair of equations. And if I, if I um, add these two equations, what's going to happen is um, you're going to eliminate... You're going to eliminate the, the, the sigma because they have the same value. So if I add the two equations, these disappear, and I'm left with um, 0 is equal to, and I have 12.7 plus 18.5, that's going to be 31.2. And I'll have, if I add these together, I'll have minus uh, 2 mu. So I can say that 2 mu is equal to 31.2. So mu is equal to 31.2 divided by 2, which is going to be, I think, 15.6. Okay, so mu is 15.6. Okay, let me just make sure in case I made a mistake there. 31.2 divided by 2. 
which gives you 15.6 that's right and then we can find what sigma is by substituting it into um, this will 15.6 into one of these equations for example I can substitute into here so I have sigma is equal to 18.5 minus 15.6 divided by 0 0.67 so the sigma value is going to therefore be so I have 18.5 minus the answer and divided by 0 0.67 That gives you 4.3283, 4.3283 continues on. Let's see how they want us to round our answers. 3SF, so this is going to be 4.33, 4.33, and these are all in minutes. Minutes, okay, so we found sigma and we found mu. So this is the standard deviation and this is the mean. So we can say the mean is 15.6 minutes and the standard deviation. Oh, we want the variance. Hold on, we want the variance. Okay, so you have to be careful here. What I found was the standard deviation. The variance is a, the variance is going to be the square. So the variance is, equal, is going to be uh, sigma squared. So I'll take my answer here and I'll square it which gives me 18.734, 18.734, dot, dot, dot. So that's 18.7, so the variance is equal to 18.7 minutes. So there's the answers for part B, okay? All right, so now that's the answer for part B, and now we're going to go into part C. Okay, as for part C, it says the actual mean and variance of the data were 15.3 minutes and 20.1 minutes squared. Um, yeah, that's squared, by the way, because it's a squared unit. Respectively, comment on the suitabil suitability of the model. Okay, so the actual mean and the variance 15.3, and that's 15.6, very close, and 20.1 and 18.7, again, very close. So we could say that the model, the normal distribution model, seems suitable. Okay, okay, so this this model this seems okay suitable. The reason being as the the um, actual and you know um, normal distribution. values are very close, something like this. Okay, so the model seems suitable because the actual values are very close, okay, for the mean and even for the um, variation, variance. Okay, so the mean and the variance are close to the actual values, okay, that we calculate by normal distribution. Therefore, the normal distribution would be a suitable model to, you know, kind of model the situation of the waiting time. Okay, so that's the answer to this question part, uh, question number, as I said, number 12 from my end of topic worksheet, number three from Solomon I paper. Thank you for watching. Other questions that you might want to watch from um, this Solomon paper, um, when, when I get around to answering them, I'm going to put them in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from um, S1 normal distribution, you'll find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link on the top of the paper i'll take you to say um, another s1 paper that you might be interested in watching thank you for watching and see you soon